Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. Now we've already worked through the hard parts of this question. You can see that uh, parts A and B were worth five marks each. So we've done the hard work. Now all we need to do is use what we've done to just simply write down the answers to part C. You can, of course, do a check if you've got time and if you've got plenty of time while you're studying, you might like to do that. But in the exam, all you need to do is make sure that you write down P and D with everything in the right order. So let's uh, remind ourselves of our answers to parts A and B. In part A, we found the eigenvalues shown as lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. And then in part B, we found the normalised eigenvectors, which I've written in the same order as I've written the uh, eigenvalues. So the first eigenvector relates to the first eigenvalue and so on. It's really important in part C, when you're doing the diagonalisation, that you do keep things in the right order. So that if you've chosen to write your eigenvalues in this order, then your eigenvectors will be in the same order too. So let's uh, write down our matrix P. So this consists of the eigenvectors written in a, as a 3x3 three three matrix. Now because all of them have got halves, well apart from the 0, we could take the half outside. So the first one would be root 2, 0, mm, minus root 2, yeah, minus root 2. Next one, 1, minus root 2, and 1. And the final column all positives, isn't it? Yes, so 1, root 2, and 1. So that's the matrix P. And the matrix D, if you've written your matrix P with the uh, eigenvectors in that order, then the matrix D must have the eigenvalues in the same order. So this is the diagonal matrix, so the eigenvalues appear on the main diagonal. So the first one is 2, the second one 2 minus root 2, and the last one 2 plus root 2. It's a diagonal matrix, so everything else must be 0. So that's all you need to do to get your two marks. So that's one possibility for P and D. If you want to check, let's write down what you would do. So you would write down p to the t times a times p. Um, I think it's a good idea to leave this half outside for p. So of course it will come outside for p to the t as well. So a half times a half would be a quarter. And then p to the t, that's the transpose. So we're just swapping around rows and columns. So we would get root 2, 0, minus root 2 for the first row, 1, minus root 2, 1 for the, first, for the second row, and then 1, root 2, 1 for the last row. And then we would write down the matrix A, so that would be 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, and then remember we've already taken the half route side right at the front for p so then we would just copy that down root 2 1 1 0 minus root 2 root 2 minus root 2 1 1 so you would multiply those together obviously in in two stages and if you do that what you ought to find is that you get on the main diagonal, 8, 8 minus 4 root 2, and 8 plus 4 root 2. And of course everything else is 0, because this is a diagonal matrix, which is almost not fitting on the page. So that is a way of checking that this works out correctly, so that that is equal to the matrix D.